I've gone through several iterations of thinking, but the most significant of which uh, really was in uh, 1996, and that was the year that the builder completed the house in which we live. It was Richard Meyer was the designer, and met a wonderful lady named Andrea Schwann, who was his publicist, and she introduced me to the man that would become the primary developer of our collection for the last 25 years, a man named Alan Schwartzman, who at the time was a writer, a bit of a critic, had been a gallerist, a little bit of everything. Um, and I stumbled into being his first client. A Alan being a museum curator, gave, you know, gave him both gravitas and status. And his way and his manner and his approach was really about as an educator and as a teacher. And I think that I loved the process very early in, in our conversations. And it wasn't about buying art. It was about seeing what we liked. It was about going and looking and thinking. And we didn't buy anything for close to a year. We traveled, we went to museums, we, he looked at my collection as it was at that point in time, which essentially was a, a mix and match. But we spent some time really thinking about what we wanted to do, and ultimately we, we hit on uh, two themes. And the first theme, which made the most sense, was in, within the vocabulary of the Richard Meyer House, which is this sort of postmodern, very minimalist aesthetic and about light, space, and minimalism, if you will. And this was an area that seemed ripe for collecting. The works would resonate in this space. And that was sort of our jumping off point to begin to develop a collection. But we continue to try to, to travel this journey of looking at art and, and identifying things that are additive to the collection. Overlaying all this, of course, is uh, something significant, which is uh, an idea conceived by Marguerite and Robert Hoffman, good friends of ours from Dallas. They suggested, and we acquiesced, to pledge our collections as they were to the Dallas Museum of Art. And along the way, our dear friend Dee Dee and Rusty Rose said they wanted in on the action. I don't know that there was any action to that. But we, uh, you know, we collectively made this pledge. I believe it's 2003. We looked at it as an opportunity to grow. It became an opportunity to build out collections, to be even more adventurous. When you think in terms of an institutional collection, Suddenly, there are no size limits, there are no space limits, there's no conceptual limits. You're, you're, you're liberated rather than confined. So that has been, that's been a guiding principle in our collecting, uh, Cindy and my collecting over the last, certainly over the last decade or so. Needless to say, if I was becoming a collector, suddenly I had a lot more work than I had wall space. Uh, but I also, because we were collecting works that were a little difficult to collect sometimes, or had, by virtue of scale or by virtue of complications of installation. My late partner, Vernon Faulkner, and I, who was a collector, an oil man from East Texas and a collector as well, got the idea that we'd buy a little warehouse space so we could store some work and that we would, we would put a little viewing room in. And after searching around, we found a space but we didn't put a little viewing room in. We built 17,000 feet of exhibition space, first-rate exhibition space, Kunsthalle-like exhibition space, as well as storage space, and we sublet part of our building to an art handling firm, so we had immediate access to bringing and selling and shoving and, and rearranging all the art we wanted. The Warehouse Dallas is what we, what we call it, and our collection is stored here and we do exhibition programming here and we have uh, initially Alan is ostensibly the director of this collection uh, and Alan curated most of the exhibitions we did for the first five or six years but we decided a few years ago to bring in guest curators to take a look at the collection from fresh with fresh eyes from another point of view uh, in the hopes that it would be informative and interesting to uh, the patrons in our community. And so over the last few years, we've had several guest curators. Rodrigo Mora was one, Mika Yoshitaki was one, and our most recent is Gavin Delahunty, former 
uh, Hoffman curator at the Dallas Museum of Art. I think the better understanding you have of, of the history of things, the, the richer the experience can be when you go out on the journey of collecting. I think that having someone that has those instincts can, if they're the right person, can provide guidance, can give you some balance, some perspective, some thinking that in standing in front of a painting begins to teach you how to look at it from a slightly different perspective, particularly if it's art of a different period, if it's art of a conceptual nature that isn't just about pretty images, you know, or incredible craftsmanship, but really about maybe a hidden message that the artist is trying to, uh, to share with you. So I believe we have a significant collection that actually inspires or encourages other people to take a look at material or ideas that we are exhibiting or that we are showing. Well, well that's incredibly flattering, uh, but I don't think it's unique. I think there are many collections uh, in this country and around the world, I suspect, some of which we've seen, some of which we just know of, uh, you know, tangentially, uh, that over time, people that have been at it for a while begin to respect that you're doing interesting things and that you have something to say. Uh, we, we don't do anything for commercial accolades or for any reason other than uh, we think it's interesting to us. Instead of starting every response with no, or is there a market for that, I think the, the idea of, well, let me look at that. Let's, let's explore that. And you can't go down every rabbit hole, but you, you, your goal is to constantly keep learning.